ඔඩියෙන් භාගයයි කලක් පවතින අලුත් වෙනුමයි Tonight top priority Special vaccination centers are to be set up at main hospitals from Monday for senior citizens. Not so fast. Health authorities say detection of only 5 Delta variant cases in Sri Lanka no reason to relax. The whole epidemic of Delta variant that happened in India also happened roughly up to 4 months after detecting the variants and this can happen even in Sri Lanka. Express payout. Sri Lanka is set to receive 720 million rupees as interim compensation for disaster hit fisher folk. The interim claim was for 40 million out of which they have agreed to settle as a part payment for this and they have sought some further clarification to process the balance of it. Subject of preference. Opposition MPs say presidential address exposed the government's inefficiencies. We were promised that there will be 13 million people vaccinated very very quickly by September. This is a near impossibility. All that and much more coming up on First at Night. This Saturday the 26th of June 2021. Dasana kanti chune sahita live aish tantale pe tatwala eti prashna 10 ak walakai. From Ada Verona This is Other Than Our First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Thamma Geknak. Now there may be only five confirmed cases of the Delta COVID variant, but it doesn't mean that there cannot be more. As such, health authorities are urging people to exercise extra vigilance to prevent the further spread of a, of the deadly strain. Now, the calls come at a time when the World Health Organization has put the number of countries the variant has infiltrated at 85. The global body also says that as some countries ease public health and social measures, an increase in transmission around the world is seen. Since the 16th of this month, Sri Lanka's daily caseload of COVID-19 infections have been declining. Though it is cause enough to let out a sigh of relief, a danger lurks. The feared Delta variant of the virus which pushed India's health system to a breaking point was detected from the community on the 17th with five persons testing positive for the strand in Dematagoda. Since then, there have been two more cases both from the area of Kote which are speculated to be the Delta variant. Since then no other cases which are suspected to be the delta variant have been found from the community in the island but the health authorities are wary of the situation they highlight india as a prime example saying that the rampant spread of the variant was only detected 4 months after the identification of the first infection the so called epidemic of delta variant that happened in india also happened roughly up to 4 months after detecting the variants and this can happen even in sri lanka so therefore we have to take all possible precautions to make sure that the covid 19 infection is not spreading which will prevent any way the new variant as well this new variant will be spreading at a higher rate if we allow it to spread the public need to adhere to those measures even though general numbers are going down because we might get another cluster also it is not only sri lanka that is facing the threat of the delta variant the world health organization puts the number of countries the india originated strand has spread to at 85 I know that globally there is currently a lot of concern about the delta variant and WHO is concerned about it too. Delta is the most transmissible of the variants identified so far. Has been identified in at least 85 countries and is spreading rapidly among unvaccinated populations. As some countries is public health and social measures we're starting to see increases in transmission around the world Sri Lanka's daily case load yesterday came in at 1876 though there is a marked drop in new infections the western province is still the worst affected 901 fresh cases were confirmed across the Kaluthara Colombo and Gampar districts 
At the other end of the scale is the North Central Province with only just 21 new cases. In the meantime, it was confirmed yesterday that three members of the same family had succumbed to COVID-19. The family had been residing in the area of Murtuvala in Peradiniya. All three had suffered from COVID-related respiratory problems on several occasions and all had died at hospital. In response to the incident, the Ministry of Health said that an investigation is underway to ascertain whether the trio's death could have been prevented. The regional epidemiology units of those areas will investigate it and identify if there was any service provision delay or any action that, that would have been taken by the family members. And we will have to make sure that if something has gone wrong, then we have to make sure that such things will not be repeated in the future so that the things will be corrected and preventable deaths will be prevented. During the last 24-hour cycle, 43 COVID-related fatalities were confirmed, taking the island's dead toll to 2,905. Meanwhile, after 2,172 COVID patients were confirmed to have recovered today, the country's overall number of recoveries rose to 216,840. As for today, there have been 1,086 new COVID-19 infections so far, taking the number of active cases to 31,310. ඔබේ හැඟීම් සහ සිතුවිලි හිර කර තබා ගන්න එපා. අමතන්න 1926 ජාතික මානසික සෞඛ්‍ය උපකාර සේවාව. The Minister of Health meanwhile says that there is a decline of people over the age of 60 opting for vaccination. This the ministry says is putting the people within that age group at risk. Meanwhile the Government Medical Officers Association announced the setting up of vaccination centers at main hospitals from Monday making it easier for senior citizens to be vaccinated. The plea from the health authorities ever since the start of the pandemic had been adhere to health and safety guidelines. Following the development and production of vaccines, the authorities have also been encouraging people to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Countries across the world, Sri Lanka included, are conducting immunization drives on their populations, prioritizing the vulnerable groups. The majority of people who succumbed to the virus were either over 60 years of age or had been suffering from an underlying health condition putting them in the high-risk category. However, the Ministry of Health says that currently there is a decline in the number of persons over the age of 60 opting for the vaccine. We would like to urge family members of the adults and the elderly people who are living, especially in Western province, to get their parents, elderly people, to the nearest immunization center during this weekend so that you all are available and make sure that they are getting the relevant vaccine doses because that will be the only way to prevent any complications or deaths in case they get infected with COVID-19. In the meantime, the Government Medical Officers Association says that measures have been taken to set up vaccination centres at main hospitals in a bid to increase the efficiency of the vaccine rollout. The move will be implemented from Monday. The vaccination centres will prioritise senior citizens, particularly persons over the age of 60, making it easier for them to be vaccinated at any time. Persons of this age group are only required to have their national identity card when they come to be immunised. It is no secret that there is a clear shortage of vaccines with manufacturing issues coupled with vaccine hoarding by wealthy nations, creating a stark imbalance in the vaccination process in a global scale. As such, Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, says that the world is repeating the same mistakes made with the access to HIV and H1N1 treatment and vaccines by not supplying to poor income countries. The world as international community, as the world is failing. As global community, we are failing. We're repeating the same mistake as HIV AIDS, which took 10 years to reach the low-income countries after it was already rampant in high-income countries. And the H1N1 vaccines that was delivered to low-income countries after the pandemic, after the epidemic was over. Do we want to repeat the same thing? Can't we learn from what happened in the past? The problem is vaccine supply. And even now, it's not the absorptive or the delivery problem that's a problem. There is no vaccine. You can't even talk about delivery or absorption capacity when there is no vaccine. The Director General of the WHO added that people in poorer countries are still under lockdowns, while those in rich countries are enjoying life once more. The whole world is sick and tired of lockdowns. You can see it from how the citizens of the high-income countries are behaving now. 
Everywhere you go, you see crowds as if there is no pandemic. Then you go to countries where there is no vaccine access, still lockdowns. Now moving on with other local stories, Express Feeders, the company that owns the Express Pearl, responsible for the biggest environmental disaster to hit Sri Lanka to date, has agreed to pay 720 million rupees, just over 3.5 million US dollars, to the Sri Lankan authorities. The sum is to be dispersed as financial relief to the thousands of fisher folk whose livelihoods have been jeopardized by the disaster. The Sri Lankan government earlier this month filed an interim claim of 40 million US dollars, of which the approximate 3.5 million US dollars is a part component of, until financial cl or final clarifications are completed before the payment of the full amount. In response to a 40 million US dollar interim compensation claim filed earlier this month by the Sri Lankan authorities, the Express Pearl's owning company Express Feeders have offered 720 million rupees a bit more than 3.5 million US dollars to cover compensation for fishermen affected by the environmental disaster. Speaking to First at Nine today, Justice Minister Ali Sabri revealed that the 720 million rupee payment is only a component of the larger interim claim, which will be finalized once necessary clarifications have been provided to the ship operator. This 4.6 million or around 720 million is actually a part payment of the first interim claim we made. The interim claim was for 40 million, out of which they have agreed to settle as a part payment for this and they have sought some further clarification and details to process the balance of it. That is how it is. And then we are now in the process of actually getting the expert and also collecting the data to submit the full claim for the main thing. This is not easy to assess that because we may not have the expertise to even identify the long-term effect on environment and our biodiversity and other connected concerns as a result of this disaster. So we are in the process of collating all those information together with the local experts and we are also looking out for international experts. So what we could do at this point in time is to diligently prosecute it and we are doing that. Meanwhile, thousands of traditional fisherfolk have been left high and dry following a fishing ban imposed immediately after the disaster struck earlier this month. Unable to venture out to sea and also having faced the prospect of rising public fears of fish contamination in the coming months, the future looks increasingly bleak for them. In any case, cleanup operations are continuing with the uphill task of freeing hundreds of kilometers of coastline from billions of the dreaded plastic nurdles continuing to wash up ashore. However, what the 720 million rupees can never cover are the marine species, including over 100 sea turtles so far, continuing to wash up dead on our shores. With the payment due to be credited to the government next week, the process of dispersing is set to commence, beginning with the appointment of a committee to oversee the entire program. Meanwhile, Indian Coast Guard photographs have shown the distressed MSC Messina container carrier's soot-stained superstructure after its engine room fire has been brought under control. Distress calls from the vessel yesterday told of a fire that broke out in its engine room that caused an explosion. One crew member remains missing, according to latest reports. The Indian Coast Guard rushed ships and surveillance aircraft to its location yesterday, fearing a third maritime emergency in just nine months. A salvage tug was also deployed to assist the vessel, while a sister ship of the MSC Messina remained on standby for emergency assistance. Navy spokesperson Captain Indica De Silva revealed that the Maritime Rescue Coordination Center at Port Blair this afternoon informed his counterparts in Colombo that the vessel is currently being towed to Singapore by salvage tug TC Vigor. Now, the President's national address yesterday was the subject of choice today for members of the main opposition, Samagi Janabalaveke. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa called the speech evidence of the government's inefficiency in dealing with current national issues, while MP Iran Vikramaratna offered up a list of issues that he felt the President missed out on. Speaking at a media briefing today, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa took aim at the President's national address yesterday, calling it proof of the government's inefficiency and inability to empathize with the people's issues. <laughs> 
Tamangi Nuhekia, Tamangi Asamat Bahave, Honim Production Eker. Pahe Dilivama Merate Laksasankia the Janata Balapur to some poor Nimasumuna. Mangahana came with the Janadabatuma Promoka Rajin Merate Janata Murdena me Barapatal Prashna Pilimada. I sang with the Bahavet. Meanwhile, speaking at a separate media briefing today, Samagijana Balavegia MP Eran Vikramratna stated that Sri Lanka remains on a slippery slope while accusing the President's address of being full of tall asks, inaccuracies and a lack of focus on ground realities. We were promised that there will be 13 million people vaccinated very, very quickly by September. This is a near impossibility. GSP Plus is basically on its way out unless there is some radical changes. Fertilizer ban is going to send the harvest down and might create more hunger in the country. And another important thing that was not addressed was the rule of law in this country and justice for all and media freedom. You did not address the issue that the doing businesses index, Sri Lanka is 99 out of 190 countries. In global competition, we are 84 out of 141 countries. On the Corruption Perception Index, we are 94 out of 180 countries. You did not address these. On ICT adoption, we are 107. If we really want to build this economy, those are the matters that should have been addressed in a speech to the nation. Yes, the economy has many challenges. We agree it is not an easy task. You have to overcome the pandemic. You have to bring the food prices down. You have to improve agriculture and value-added agriculture. You have to address the tourism industry, the apparels, the rubber and manufacturing sectors with or without the IMF. You have to go in for fiscal consolidation, reduce expenditure, eliminate corruption, and then use the tax revenue to cushion the poor. Invest in people, not in infrastructure. Instead of building highways, Build high-speed internet coverage. Provide tabs and provide iPads for these children. And finally, Mr. President, Sri Lanka is a small island. Open this economy out. Integrate to the rest of the world. Help the SMEs. Provide them and invest in their technology. Invest not just in fertilizer, but in technology for agriculture. That will take this country where it should go. The inmates who were protesting atop the chapel ward at the Valicata prison have called off their protest today. Though that's the case, prison spokesperson Commissioner Chandan Ekanak added that several inmates on death row at the Valicata prison took to the roof to protest. Meanwhile, a Booza prison inmate who is also on death row has also gone on a hunger strike in support of the protesting Valicata inmates. A group of death row inmates at the Mahara and Valicata prisons launched a hunger strike on Thursday, demanding that their sentences be commuted to life imprisonment. We will see you on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching First at Night. Now, the Department of Posts says that the value-added tax policy with regard to the postal shipments by the European Union on their member countries will be revised with effect from the 1st of next month. When the new tax policy becomes effective, people in Sri Lanka sending packages valued under €150 to EU countries, except letters, will have to pay the VAT directly to the EU member country. Postmaster General Ranjit Arya Ratna has issued a communique saying that a revised VAT policy by the European Union with regard to the postal shipments on its member countries will come into effect from the 1st of July. The tax regulatory changes will be applicable to all goods except letters imported to the EU countries including postal customers, online sellers and online marketplaces. According to the new tax policy, the sender must pay this VAT directly to the EU member country for all postal goods valued less than €150. The Postmaster General said that the revised tax policy applies to any postal item, including a personal gift item sent by a person living in Sri Lanka to any person living in an EU member country. Meanwhile, items valued at more than €150 will be subjected to other custom regulations as determined by the relevant government, in addition to the VAT policy of the EU member country. As such, all applicable custom duties on postal items over €150 will be charged from the recipients of the relevant postal items at the destination. 
For more information, the International Postal Services Division at the Department of Post can be contacted by telephone on 011-230-017 or by email supdt at slpost.lk. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.